thank you for choosing the CoagSense PT-INR monitoring system. The CoagSense system is used to test prothrombin time in patients taking warfarin for oral anticoagulant therapy. Results are reported as international normalized ratio or INR units and PT seconds. Because the system directly detects clot formation, it reports true PT seconds. The CoagSense system consists of a meter and single-use PT strips and control strips along with certain accessories required for testing. This overview will cover the basics of using the CoagSense PT INR monitoring system. For complete instructions, be sure to read the printed user manual and all packaging inserts. Let's take a quick look at the CoagSense meter. On the top, you'll see the on-off button with the power symbol, meter display, menu buttons, and the strip holder. The menu buttons allow you to set the date and time and access the memory. The meter automatically prompts you to set the date and time after inserting batteries. Any other time, you may access the date and time by pressing the set button. Use the plus and minus buttons to increase or decrease hours. Use next to change the minutes, month, day, and year. Press done to save. To access the memory, press the mem button. Use prev or next to view readings. Press done when finished. An optional portable thermal printer is also available to print results from memory. The CoagSense meter stores the last 100 readings and automatically overwrites the oldest result. Each result is date and time stamped. The memory cannot be cleared, nor will readings in the memory be lost if there's a loss of power. On the back is a printer, data port, and the AC adapter. If you are using the AC adapter, use only the CoagSense adapter by plugging into the adapter jack and a standard AC outlet. Reportable ranges and unexpected results. The readable range of the coag sense meter for INR is 0.8 to 8.0. Results beyond 8.0 INR will give the error message, no clot detected. An unexpected result may include any result that falls outside the patient's therapeutic target range or a result that falls inside the target range but is not consistent with the patient's current health status. For example, if the patient is experiencing bleeding or bruising. The following can cause unexpected results. Certain prescription drugs, for example, heparin, and certain over-the-counter medications, for example, antibiotics, can affect the action of oral blood thinners and the INR value. Changes in diet, lifestyle, or taking nutritional supplements, such as ginkgo biloba, can affect the action of oral blood thinners and the INR value. Liver diseases, congestive heart failure, thyroid dysfunction, lupus, Antiphospholipid antibody syndrome, or APS, and other diseases or conditions can affect the action of oral blood thinners and the INR value. Be sure to confirm whether the patient has any of these conditions before you begin testing, and any time there are changes in health patient status or medications after you have begun testing. If you get unexpected results, Follow instructions for retesting on the CoagSense PT INR meter. For unexpected results, contact CoagSense Technical Support. Consider retesting using an alternative method prior to adjusting the patient's dose of anticoagulant medication or any other corrective action. Materials Overview Control Strips There are two low control strips, two high control strips, 
and a control strip activation solution that are shipped with each professional PT test strip kit. Control testing should be completed immediately for each new lot of test strips when received from your distributor. Control should be run as soon as you receive your new lot of strips as the plasma has a limited shelf life. QC ranges for that lot number can be found on the strip kit box. Discard used strips in a biohazard waste container using universal precautions. Control strips should be stored in their boxes at room temperature Performing a control test. Follow these steps to perform a test on either a low or high control strip. For this example, we will show a low control test. Make sure that the power is on. The display should read, Ready, Insert Strip. Open a low control package, tearing at the notched end. Remove the strip. With the barcode facing down, hold the round end of the test strip and gently push the strip completely into the meter. The strip fits snugly when pushed all the way toward the back wall of the strip holder. It is suggested that the back of the meter be held with one hand while using the other hand to insert the strip fully in a smooth motion. When the strip is correctly inserted, the display should read, Low Control Detected. If an error is encountered, remove the strip and reinsert in a smooth fashion. The meter will warm up the strip and display a countdown of the time remaining during the warm-up cycle. When the meter beeps, it is ready for the control strip activation solution. The display will read, Apply Control Solution. You now have two and a half minutes to apply the activation solution to the control strip. Open the control activation solution vial by unscrewing the lid. Hold the sample transfer tube in the middle between your thumb and index finger, being sure not to block the small air holes in the bulb. Holding the tube as horizontal as possible, tilt the vial towards the tube and insert the tube into the control activation solution within the vial. The solution will automatically draw up capillary action. Do not squeeze the bulb. Once the solution automatically stops moving, remove the tube from the vial. Shift your thumb and index finger to the flat sides of the bulb covering the small air holes. Apply the control activation solution by touching the tip down in the same application well where the green light is flashing. Apply gentle pressure to the bulb until the solution just exits the tube. It is important to not squeeze too hard to avoid introducing air bubbles during control solution delivery. Maintain pressure while removing the tube from the test strip and discard the tube. When the control activation solution is properly applied and detected, the meter display will read, Testing, please wait. When a plasma clot is produced by the control strip, the timer will stop and the display shows low, control, OK, and display the PT clotting time in seconds. Note that an INR result is not shown for safety reasons. Once you have a low control result, you should repeat this entire procedure with a high control strip. Once both controls have been successfully tested, that lot of test strips have been qualified. It is important to note that the meter does not require running of controls for calibration. The controls are, however, a full functional test of the reagent and the meter's ability to detect a clot. All information needed to calculate INR is conveyed to the meter using the barcode on the patient test strip. Materials Overview Test Strip Each PT strip is enclosed in an individual sealed pouch with the storage, expiration, as well as lot number information printed on it. Once opened, test strips should be used within 10 minutes of opening. The test strips are designed for single use only. Discard used test strips in a biohazard waste container using universal precautions. Test strips should be stored in their boxes at room temperature.
Performing a PT test. Make sure that you have all the supplies needed before you start, including a 21-gauge lancet, sample transfer tubes, sterile alcohol prep pads, gauze square, and a biohazard or sharps waste container. For finger stick blood testing, increasing the flow of blood in the finger will help you capture a good drop of blood. Before you lance the finger, have the patient warm their hand by washing it in warm water or by using a hand warmer. Do not use fingers with tight rings, scars, calluses, or other features that prevent getting good access to the blood. One of the middle or index fingers on either hand is recommended. Gently squeeze or massage the finger to be lanced toward the tip of the finger. Good circulation can be seen if the patient's fingertip changes to a pinkish shade. Lance the fleshy part of the fingertip just slightly left or right of the center. Remove the cap from the single-use 21-gauge lancet. Use only 21-gauge lancets as smaller diabetes lancets do not produce sufficient whole blood volume. Place the lancet against the skin. Holding the body of the lancet, push down firmly against the finger. Put pressure at the first finger joint, then gently squeeze the finger from the sides to get it started. Lowering the patient's hand and arm so that the fingertip is below the heart helps the blood drop form. Keep squeezing the finger until you produce a pea-sized bead of blood. Please note, squeezing the finger stick site excessively or milking releases interstitial tissue layer fluid containing tissue factors that can cause unreliable results. Collect the sample using a sample transfer tube. Hold the transfer tube below the bulb and horizontal or with the bulb pointing slightly towards the ground to let gravity assist the filling of the tube. Do not squeeze the bulb of the transfer tube at any point during the collection process. Shift your thumb and index finger to the flat sides of the bulb on the transfer tube covering the air holes. Rest your hand on the meter. Roll your hand towards the test strip and touch the tip of the transfer tube down onto the bottom of the sample application well where the green light is flashing. Apply gentle pressure to the bulb until the blood just exits the tube. Do not produce air bubbles. Hold that pressure on the bulb while you pull your hand away from the meter to avoid back suctioning the sample. You must apply the blood to the test strip within 15 seconds of lancing the finger. The light should go out and the meter should display, testing, please wait. The testing time is the patient's actual clotting time as the system produces a true prothrombin time. Never add more blood to the test strip. Never collect a second sample from the same finger stick. If an error is displayed, either not enough blood sample was applied or the sample had air bubbles in it. Refer to the troubleshooting section of the manual. Remove the strip and retest with a new strip and fresh finger stick from a different finger. Care and maintenance. No maintenance is required other than routine cleaning and or disinfecting. To clean the outside of the meter, Use a clean, damp, non-abrasive cloth. The meter can be disinfected using a 10% bleach solution with a two-minute contact time. The test strip is designed to contain the patient sample, preventing it from entering the meter. Do not clean or disinfect inside the meter where the test strip is inserted. Cleaning this area should be avoided. The meter is designed for AA 1.5 volt alkaline batteries only. It does not recharge these alkaline batteries when connected to AC power. The meter performs a self-test when it is first turned on. If there are any problems with the meter, an error message is shown on the display. In addition, the meter displays errors due to common procedural or technique related lapses. For a complete list of error messages and their troubleshooting, please refer to the troubleshooting section in the user's manual or contact technical support.